Hey guys, Tyler Berger here with Bass Fishing HQ. Have you ever got to your local lake or river or pond and thought to yourself, man, it just seems like the bass are harder and harder to catch? Well, 20 years of research may be proving that you are correct. So stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. As we know, largemouth bass owe a lot of their longevity and size to their parents' genes. This is why we see organizations like the Texas Park and Wildlife invest so much time, money, and effort into their share lunker program, which helps to breed big bass for Texas lakes. In an experiment spanning more than 20 years, researchers also discovered that vulnerability to being hooked or caught is also a heritable trait among largemouth bass. It's important to know that before I talk about this research experiment, all the information can be found in the article by Science Daily titled Born to be Caught, which I will link in the description below. This study was done on a 15-acre research impoundment run by the Illinois Natural History Survey. In this strictly controlled environment, certain anglers reserved certain blocks of time to go fishing. Every fish that they caught was placed into a live well so that the fish could be measured, tagged, and then released back into the pond to be potentially caught again. The researchers kept track for four years of every fish that was caught in this 15-acre impoundment, and after four years of documenting every single fish catch, the lake was completely drained and the bass were collected alive. Roughly 1,700 bass were collected from the lake and the results from the study are a bit staggering. For instance, one bass was caught three times in the first two days of the experiment, while another bass was caught 16 times over the course of one year. However, one of the most interesting parts of this experiment was that 200 of the 1,700 bass had never been caught, even though they had been in the lake for the entire four-year period. The research did not stop there. Researchers then labeled the 200 fish that had never been caught before as LV bass, or low vulnerability. On the other hand, bass that had been caught more than four times over the course of four years were labeled as HV bass, or high vulnerability bass. These bass were then separated and placed into two separate research ponds. The LV bass placed in one pond to produce a line of LV offspring, and the HV bass placed in another pond to produce a line of HV offspring. The two lines were then marked and raised in common ponds until they were big enough to be fished. Controlled fishing experiments after that clearly showed that the HV offspring were more vulnerable to angling than the LV offspring bass. This selection process was repeated several times over the course of 20 years, and as predicted, vulnerability was found to be a heritable trait. Not only was it a heritable trait, but vulnerability actually grew larger between the HV and LV bass. The LV bass continued to be harder and harder to catch over generation and generation, while the HV, the high vulnerability bass, actually showed a small increase in catch rates over time. The research did not speculate as to why certain bass were high vulnerability or why certain bass were low vulnerability to begin with, but in my personal opinion, I simply believe that some bass are smarter than others just like people. So after going through kind of this research and this information, I think that there's three things that we can really conclude from all the, the data in the research. And the first thing is that 200 out of the 1700 bass were never caught in that original study where they, they fished the lake for four years. And to me, that's just kind of astonishing, really. I mean, 200 out of 1700 comes out to roughly about 12% of that bass population was never caught. And I guess over the four year time span, I just would have thought that pretty much all the bass would have been caught and many bass would have been caught several times because at a lot of given outings, you might go out and catch five or six bass. Now, if you have several people do that every single day over the course of four years, 
that's a lot of fish to be caught. So it just makes me think about the lakes that are around me and maybe the lakes that are around you. There's, there's a good chance that although this was done in a, a smaller environment, that maybe 10, 12% of the bass that are in your lake right now have never been caught. You've never seen them. They've never been caught in a, in a tournament or anything like that. And it just kind of makes you sit there and think, what's really swimming in some of these lakes? You know, you always hear these stories of these big fish that people saw. So what's maybe swimming out in some of these lakes, you know? And, and another thing that I kind of find interesting that kind of correlates to that is, you know, a lot of times in the spring, I've, I've seen it a lot of times in, in, in a number of different lakes, but in the springtime, kind of during that pre-spawn and, and spawn time, you really see some of the biggest bass that the lake has to offer. You know, like if you go to Lake Chickamauga, you know, they tell you to go in like February, you know, go to go in February, go in March, because that's when you're going to catch possibly the biggest bass of your life. And it just makes me think that are these are these giant bass, these really big bass, maybe the part of that 12% that we pretty much never see, right? They're, they're rarely caught and they're out there, they're swimming out there, but you just don't see them a whole lot. It just, it just kind of makes me think that maybe these giant bass we only see in the springtime, you know, maybe, maybe they're not even caught in the spring. You just see them. Those are the ones, those are part of that 10 or 12% that are literally never caught. For whatever reason, they're just smarter. So the second thing that this really makes me think about is how important catch and release is because if, if a lake is seeing a lot of bass harvested out of it, you know, whether that's from recreational anglers or, or people just wanting to catch bass and, and eat them, those are the bass that are those highly vulnerable bass, those bass that, that, that are being caught more than often. And the bass that are now going to be left in the lake are those low vulnerable fish, those ones that aren't striking lures as much and, and if you see that a lot in the future, that's when it's going to continue to get harder and harder and harder to catch fish. So that is why catch and release is so important, not only for the health of the fishery, but really so that us fishermen can kind of continue to catch fish in the future. So kind of the third thing that I specifically think about is tournament fishing and how in tournament fishing, we're catching these highly vulnerable bass, you know, these bass that are more apt to actually strike a lure. So then we catch those fish, we bring them back to a weigh-in site, we, we weigh those fish in and we release them. But my question is, now we're compiling all these fish into uh, a smaller area. Where did these highly vulnerable bass go after we weigh them in. And there's actually been several studies and a lot of research done on that. And I'm actually going to be putting out a video in just a few days about that exact topic. So guys, make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you wanna see that video, if you wanna see all my videos, make sure you subscribe. Guys, if you enjoyed this kind of style of video, please give me a thumbs up. Please leave a comment if you have any questions and I'll see you guys in the next video. First,